Hey, so I'm here with Conrad. Conrad, do you want to introduce yourself and a little bit about the agency? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, Rob. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, so I am the CEO and arguably lead strategist of the creative copywriter. Um, so in a nutshell, we do strategy in words. And to expand on that nutshell slightly, we combine um, the science of data-driven content strategy and psychology with the art of creative copywriting, essentially to help brands get their words right at every step of the customer journey. Um, I'm not sure how, how much more you want to know about the agency, but we, when it comes to industries, we are industry agnostic, for want of a better phrase. Um, so anything from big household names in the B2C fashion world, for example, through to B2B tech and SaaS startups and scale-ups. Um, and if I'm going to name drop a little bit, some of our biggest clients are Adidas, TikTok, Hyundai, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Panasonic, um, and plenty more, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> that, that that's, a, that's a good set of logos on the website, that is. It's not bad. It's not bad. So what about the, the um, agency size and uh, whether you are like UK, European, international? Good question. Yeah, we are we're UK based. We, we live in Greenwich. Um, we've just got a new office, as we, we were just talking about, above a comedy club uh, called Up the Creek in Greenwich. It's a famous local comedy club. Um, we are what I'd call a hybrid agency. So by that, I mean, we're kind of half of us in-house on the payroll and half of us are trusted contractors mm -hmm. we've kind of always been that way um, and we are growing quite quickly and we, it's still growing in that you know getting more people in-house but at the same time making building relationships with new freelancers essentially so back to your question um there's now 14 of us in-house and we've got about the same amount of about 15 trusted contractors who do a lot of the, the copywriting work that's cool. And I guess from those names, you've got you've got clients that are, are global by the sounds of it. Very much so, yeah. So we're, we are UK-based, but we get a lot of our business, to be honest, most of it outside the UK. Um, we do very well with our SEO, which is a byproduct of good content marketing, and that's kind of what we do. So we practice what we preach. We're good at it, basically. Um, and by, by, by doing so, you know, we bring in leads and business and sometimes big brands from yeah, the US, Asia, um, the Middle East, Europe, all over the gaff, all over the place. Um, so, you know, it's quite interesting from that perspective to just have these conversations with people from completely different industries, different brands in different countries all the time. And often it's, it's not a local thing. Um, it is nice when we have a, a, a client in London. Thomson Reuters is one of our London-based clients. It's nice because we can go over to their offices, bring them donuts, you know, schmooze them. And, and obviously, I love face-to-face. -face. Um, Zoom is great, but it's nice to meet people in 3D every now and then. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I, I guess as well, the benefit of the uh, GMT time zone is, is quite important. I know from working with clients and partners over the globe, you do what you need to do, but sometimes the, sometimes the time zones can be a killer and sometimes they can play in your advantage. I mean, you guys based in the UK, you can be working on campaigns whilst a client, you know, overseas is potentially asleep. Yeah, exactly. But you're, but you're right. It, can, it depends how much um, Zoom time they want and it can pose, it can, it can be a bit tricky um, with, let's say, some of our clients in the US, but we... We're flexible, right? You know, we tend to be flexible. We, we tend to accommodate their needs. Australians, a bit of a different story. I think you know about that. It's, yeah. It can be very tough. We've struggled to work with Aussie clients. Um, but, you know, again, we, we, we've got good processes in place, good written communication, obviously. So sometimes, you know, we have worked with Australian clients and it's, it's been largely just written comms using good project management tool and not jumping on, Zoom calls in the middle of the night to <laughs> yeah, four four a.m. calls to uh, Adelaide. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like you're talking from experience there. Oh yes, oh yes, yeah. 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 Bags under the eyes. Um, how long has the agency been around? When when was it born? How old is it? Um, since 2014. 
Uh, that's when it was born. I, prior to that, I'd say that was the official birth yep. of the creative copywriter. Prior to that, I was freelancing um, and doing a number of different other things, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. I know you've got some other questions for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, born in 2014, a very important part of our journey, a very important milestone was 2017 when I brought my other half, my partner in crime, life and romance, uh, my wife, Nitsan, in. Um, she joined the company. She has a very different, a very different brain to, to me. We've got a bit of a yin yang thing going on. I'm the kind of visionary, the creative uh, strategist. She's very much um, the integrator. She's very much an operations guru, a, a process queen, if you will. And the two have worked very well together, as much as we may have butt heads at the beginning and occasionally still uh, these days. But really our growth started, I'd say in 2017 because of this combination of the, the two elements, which I think are crucial when it comes to uh, growing an agency. So kind of leading on to that, it's a beautiful segue into the first question, which casting your mind back across the agency, you know, it, it, it's tenure so far, um, not tenure, tenure. Um, what do you think? What, what would you put your finger on as, as being like the, the single biggest mistake that you feel that you've made? Can, can you explain well, that? I, I actually don't make any mistakes, Rob. So <laughs> it's going to be quite a short video. I think we can probably wrap it up there. Thanks, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah with that. um, that's a barefaced lie. Obviously, I've made, I've made many a mistake in my time. Um, and one that really jumps to mind, um, which I think comes quite often with my sort of personality type and was very acute at the beginning of, of my journey, of our journey, uh, I like to call shiny object syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, and if you haven't heard of that phrase, essentially it's the, the concept of being distracted by other opportunities and pursuing them. It's not just having them presented to you and, and toying with the idea, but pursuing too many different ideas at once. Um, and again, I'll talk about the beginning of the journey. So, you know, right at the beginning when launching the agency and one year in, you know, I'd, I had one employee on payroll um, and, you know, was working with, with freelancers, several freelancers at that time. And um, essentially I thought I could just, have she was like a mini me in my mind I could thought I could just palm off all my responsibilities and uh, and most of my tasks and, and and to her and then pursue a million different ideas um and I'll, 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 I'll be more tangible with those so there was a point at which other than running supposedly running the agency I was the co-founder of I believe four other startups <laughs> in one go because I had friends that were doing different things and presented opportunities and said yeah why don't you join or I'd hear the idea and go I want in right I want to I want to be involved um because of this shiny object syndrome and you know they, they were like yeah you can be the CMO we'll launch it together and you know one of those was a what one of them was a a, a crowdsourcing platform for musicians one was a project management tool for app developers one was another kind of side agency an illustration agency um, called Arlo's House as you can probably tell it might seem obvious to anyone and everyone watching this I was stretching myself way too thin yeah. I wasn't the main mistake I wasn't focusing lack of focus um, which is just very much needed then and still now when trying to grow an agency you know a lot of hard graft is needed essentially a lot of hard graft a lot of focus um, and you need 100% of your time, if not more than 100% of your time, really dedicated to nurturing and growing this baby and, and getting it to the next level and to the next step. I thought it would just happen organically with someone kind of running it because we were getting leads in. I was good at getting leads in through the site. But alas, that wasn't the case. And I kind of learned the hard way um, by chasing all these different dreams what, all at the same time. So what happened? I mean, I, I suppose to two related things what happened to her what happened to your mini me and, and what happened to you you know what what was the kind of outcome of that horrible jumping down the rabbit hole situation that you put yourself in 
Um, right, so my mini me, Ella, is her name. She has a name. She's uh, my best friend from, from years back. Mm -hmm. She's actually still with us and she's our head copywriter. So she's kind of been on the journey. Um, strangely, I kind of was getting her to do, I think when you start an agency, you wear many different hats, right? I think it's quite common to be the creative, to be the project manager, to be the salesperson. Gradually, you start taking those hats off which is very necessary and, 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 and a nice kind of nice thing to do. I, she became a mini mean, she was doing sales and she was doing all kinds of things. And there, there was a certain point when she got fed up and, and said, I, I'm not cut out for this. I don't want to do sales and I just want to write. That's my passion. That's what I'm good at. And things changed. It was, a, it was actually the perfect move. It was like, a, it felt like a, a bit of a shock, but it was a blessing in disguise because then that was her focus and that, and she's now, an incredible, incredible, incredible copywriter, our head copywriter. Um, me, I got burnt out, naturally. I was doing like 20 hour days. Um, I was massively overworked. I wasn't, I wasn't succeeding in any of the ventures because all of them needed 100% of my time, really. And I think I, just, I would argue the same goes for, you know, tech startup world. You need all the founders to have both legs in, not one leg in, one leg out. I had kind of two legs in five different projects, which <laughs> just if you do the math, it doesn't <laughs> work out. Um, so it didn't work out. So the agency was running and still makes making money from it, um, but it wasn't growing. It wasn't, I wasn't putting in the love and attention, time, blood, sweat and tears it needed to really take it to the next level and, and really grow. So just just I, I got burnt out essentially and I wasn't seeing a, a return on my investment whether that's time investment or money investment yeah and it's a tricky one isn't it because in doing that you become less and less creative and productive and the byproduct of that is you get frustrated that this dream that you had of success whatever that measure is um you can't achieve it and it starts actually rather than just thinking my businesses are failing you start taking it personally you start thinking you're failing and suddenly there's that that burnout spiral kicks in where nothing's working and you start doubting yourself it's a it's a horrible tailspin to get in definitely i think it's probably i'd say maybe I'm, i was an extreme case but i think it's possibly quite common for the entrepreneur yeah you know? and i um Many years later, I got diagnosed with adult ADHD, which kind of explains a lot of my life um, and this part of it, which is, you know, shiny object syndrome, being distracted. It's kind of that's how my brain works. I get ideas and I pursue them. Mm -hmm. right? I don't kind of park them and have a place. They're just ideas. Now I'm focusing on what it is I'm supposed to be doing. One of the main problems with, at least in my experience of ADHD is, is, is actually actively pursuing every idea. Yeah, taking writing, action you know, on the phone. Writing an email, you think of something else, you then go and do that. Then something, and it's like a series and a, a, a cycle and a, and, a, and a rabbit hole, um, very much tumbling down the, the, the rabbit hole was something that happened a lot to me. But it also comes with optimism. So I had this kind of blind optimism that everything was working or would work, was just around the corner from working. The longer it went on, it was, I still thought something was gonna, gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that personal journey and realisation that you've been on, and obviously the business journey that you've been on, what did you find was like the the solution? You know, a, a point that you realised that that was going on. I, I think you've pretty much touched on it, but what was the solution for you? I've got more to add. So, you know, burnout was, and not being successful, that was my first clue as to, this not being the right approach to yeah. entrepreneurship but there were there were other there were other elements that kind of came around the same time i um i joined a community so i joined the agency collective um and there was a lot of you know it's a peer-to-peer -peer networking group with content and advice and other founders some of which are at your stage some of which are further along in their journey and i got advice um Spencer Gallagher, who was one of the head honchos there now, now is in agency nomics. Um, he, he basically told me to focus and, you know, other founders of agencies that had been there, done that, got the t-shirt or the hat or whatever, um, 
could offer me that advice. And one of it, one of the things was focus. You need to focus on these things um, and not spread yourself too thin. But also I think I saw the potential of agency growth there. Because prior to that, I just thought, right, an agency, yeah, it can, it can grow organically, I can make a bit of money. But I, I was like, oh, but the tech startup, right? You know, I can I can become a billionaire or whatever, you know. And I, <laughs> um, it, I think that was part of the, the problem was like, oh, it seems shiny, this seems like, high risk but high rewards that kind of uh, uh, almost like gambling uh, you know the mm -hmm. attraction of it whereas you know I joined this community and I saw bigger agencies that were doing really well and I had like um, things that really appealed to me like big shiny offices you know really cool offices that they'd done up and they're branded you know they translated to the office and they had teams and it really cool kind of um brand cultures and things like that and we're, and we're making you know and it was lucrative as well so I kind of saw the potential and I got good advice um which I think came at sort of a similar time to me I perhaps starting to realize on my own that uh that these things weren't working and that, that I was stretching myself too thin mm -hmm. so you kind of got to the point I guess where it's like right now I know what my target is now I know what my goal or my vision for the business is I can work out how to put the blinkers on a little bit so I can still recognize that the shiny objects kicking around, but that's not my path. Exactly. And, but I will mention that shiny object syndrome is still a thing for me. Obviously it's, kind of, it's still there. It, it still rears its ugly head. Um, perhaps now in a slightly more confined way within the walls of agency growth, and it is still something I have to deal with and wrestle with and, and struggle with. And to, to give some more, I suppose, tangible, tangible advice about how I deal with it now. First of all, I've got a gr great support network. One key cog in that network being, as I mentioned, my other half, Nitsan, who is, let's say, more of the realist in the relationship. So she kind of brings me back to earth. She grounds me. But what's really important is that she's helped me put in place actual processes and systems mm -hmm. to to tackle to tackle sort of shiny object syndrome because you know a way that it does crop up now is marketing ideas i have a million million and one marketing ideas all day long middle of the night sometimes i wake up and write in my evernote and i've got a natural kind of desire to just drop that on my marketing manager's plate and go let's do that let's talk about this but yeah. i don't have the inner filter i don't have inner system to prioritize so we've built an outer filter you know and, and one thing that we came up with recently was just the scoring system right let's dump all ideas into an idea pot um and then i create a scoring system you know we right now we're in a time when we do want leads we do want to fill up our pipeline i'll be frank i'll be honest about that um so we you know we've scored each idea based on two things from one to five one of them being uh, how likely is it to generate us leads quickly? Yep. And number two being, how easy is it for us to actually flesh out that idea? You know, and then we average and we end up with like a range from one to five. So those big, amazing, you know, creative ideas, which would take the whole team a, a month to do and is really just for, for us to kind of smile at and, you know, vanity, for, for vanity metrics or something they get scored down because they take a lot of time. And when we think about it, we've historically, we've not seen them generate actual leads. So it's quite a nice way to um, organize thoughts and organize all of these thoughts I have and my marketing manager has in a, in a way that's tangible. And then you prioritize your time based on that, right? Let's, you know, let's put more of our time into the things that are more likely to get us business and can be more easily done. Like, giving talks or networking and things like that. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. That striking that balance between an incredibly creative business and one that moves the dial both for itself from the point of view of growth and scale and also for its clients is hugely important. You can't realistically have one without the other. You know, you've got to have that creativity to be at the forefront of a wave of things, but you're tempering it with some way of actually assessing whether it's viable um which makes a heck of a difference it means that you don't stop being creative but at the same time you don't put 
too much. You don't fall too far down the rabbit hole before you check and go, should we be falling down this one? Yeah, it, it, it's. I think you need both. I'm obviously very lucky to have Nitsan, who's naturally more of the process-driven side, whereas I'm naturally the other person. But, you know, I would say as an agency founder, if you are more of a me, which I think a lot are, to be honest, a lot of entrepreneurial types are, and naturally in the agency world, you're often the creative, um, then find yourself a Nitsan, right? Hire someone to be the, the integrator while you're the visionary. You know, hire someone to be, whether you're calling them COO or managing director or whatever, hire someone that has that skill set that you don't have that complement each other. Um, and yeah, I think this, it comes back to almost what we are, what your, your point there regarding creativity and process for us in terms of even our offering as an agency combines both yeah. I mentioned the science and the art I think you need both in order to truly succeed right you just you don't want just the creative ideas but you need that creativity uh, but you also need this, this the strategy and the process and, and and putting it all together so I think you get the best uh, results from combining those two almost two sides of the brain in a way Here's the kind of final question then. And people that I've, I've had sessions with have kind of answered in different ways, but I'll, I'll leave it up to you. With hindsight, like looking back over the, the years that you've been running the agency, mm. what advice would you give to yourself to avoid that shiny object syndrome? You know, if, if, if it was a young, uh, uh, sorry, if it was you talking to a young you, what would you actually say to try and avoid that? Yeah, good question. I mean, the first one's kind of obvious. Don't do what I did, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say yes to all these these ideas. Um, focus, that, that's key. You know, focus, put your time into nurturing, developing the agency, as I said. Join a community as early as possible. When I say community, a community and or mentorship program, I think learning from people who have been there, done that, is gold and i wish i'd done it earlier i think that was one of the smartest moves that i made within my journey but you know it was a few years in and i'm sure that lots of agency founders and owners don't do it because maybe they it just it doesn't happen they're not seeking seeking those answers um or that kind of mentorship but you can learn so much from other people's mistakes and their successes um, you can learn from watching videos like this right that we're talking about mistakes I mean, hindsight is such a powerful thing that you don't have until you have it yep. so you can learn from other people's hindsight you can avoid a year's worth of work i think like five ten years you could be making the same mistake over and over again and not understanding why but someone that's done that and gone through it and rectified it can say this is what you should be doing or here's my advice obviously take sometimes take things with a pinch of salt adapt your their, people's advice and mold it into what works for you and your agency but I just think it's it, it's crucial and it can save years of pain and agony and and um, uh, and failure essentially. Yeah, um, and probably more importantly, probably save yourself from burnout. Yeah, like you say, whether it's kind of molding certain tidbits that might be helpful to you to short circuit or avoid something. A lot of people. You know, quite happy. I, I, I made a load of mistakes with the business. I'm kind of happy that I did because it's how I got to where I am now. But looking back, I'd say you can do jack shit about it. But looking back, yeah. I could have maybe saved myself a bit of time and a bit of heartache here and there along the way. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world, but it is what it is. Uh, I think having a consultant or a coach or a mentor or a peer group or, you know, a, being aware enough that there's something niggling you that's wrong to then go and seek some support is incredibly powerful because people can see things that perhaps you've blindsided yourself to. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'd say even if there is nothing wrong, if everything's going great, you don't know what's around the corner. That's the, uh, I think that, and especially at each stage of growth, you know, for us kind of, we, we, you know, we, we, surpassed the, the the million last year and going from like 100 100k up to a minute up to a million is so many different 
changes, the beast, yeah. the agency transforms. There were all these challenges that we didn't know were, were around the corner. And, and, and now moving forward, I'm like, oh, I'm sure it's from, from, from this stage to double to two mil to five mil, there's so many other things and so many, it, it, it's gonna change a lot, even in terms of, you know, how you are less involved. It's no longer kind of, you can't keep an eye on everything. So process becomes so much more important than systems and, and culture is crucial, like, you know, because in the end of the day, it becomes 20, 30, 40, 50 people in order to keep that running and smoothly, like culture systems, they, they become almost the main thing. Um, so without going off onto too much of a tangent, I will rate <laughs> in and say, that's, that's my <laughs> advice. That's my advice for a younger me. No, I love it. And where can people find out more about you? I'll obviously drop this around the video or I'll work out a way of putting it next to the podcast. Uh, yeah, it's just down here, floating past, yeah. and like this, yeah, <laughs> floating around the screen. Um, yeah. Well, you can you can link in with me, you can connect with me or follow me on LinkedIn. So that's Conrad Sanders. Conrad with a K, Sanders without a U. I've been saying that all my life. Um, and <laughs> obviously, you know, check out our website. That's creative-copywriter.net. Um, and yeah, those are probably the best two ways to, to find me. And I look forward to connecting with some of you i will work out where to drop the links conrad it's been a pleasure it's been a really really cool session appreciate your time likewise thanks for having me rob okay cheers mate